something special in the wet, in the dry. You know, once in a blue moon, you'll see a performance where man and machine have just come together a bit differently. To pull something off that seems almost impossible outside of physics, even. Think Senna, Monaco, ATA. Wow! That is a sensational map from Ed Senna. Think Lewis, three wheels, Silverstone. Well, they shouldn't catch him from there, but who knows how this race is going to end. For the most wins at home, it's Lewis Hamilton who takes the race. Think Ross Chastain's wall ride. Ross Chastain used the wall to race his way into the championship four. I mean, each of these on their own merits are comic book worthy. Yeah. I'm talking mythical tofu delivery driver here. Hachiroku settings. And in 1999, in the Goodwood Festival of Speed, we'd witness another such instance. As test driver Nick Heidfeld hunkered down in his West McLaren, in readiness for what just might be the greatest thing that I've ever seen on four wheels. Because what we couldn't have known at the time is that like most other drivers' careers, Heidfeldt would be, for the most part, bang average, some highs, some loads, but mostly bookended by ifs, buts, and maybes. But for this one hill run, Heidfeldt would assume his final form. He'd absorb racecraft from all of the racing gods. Having been put under manners by fellow McLaren test team driver Ricardo Zonta only weeks earlier, and hearing that he was now the favorite to get the McLaren seat that Nick had so been holding out for, Nick Heidfeld for this one moment only would become the racer of his dreams. Because at the time for Heidfeld, there were questions about his future and about his F1 career more broadly. I mean, man's had a stellar junior career and all that, but could he really do it in the big leagues? Was Hyde felt more Nick De Vries than he was Nigel Mansell? Destined in F1 to always be the bridesmaid, never the bride. Oh, Hyde felt could be under no illusions here. He had a point to prove. And for Nick, with the very beady eyes of the F1 world watching him, that hill run that year would become his vengeance. And it did things behind the steering wheel that day that mere mortals would barely be able to conceive of, let alone pull off. I mean, as you look at the car and the way it's moving, to say it's twitchy is like saying Red Bull are half decent this year. Understatement settings, oh no. That West McLaren is trying to kill him. And not just on the twisties neither, on the bloody straights too. So relentless is Nick Heidfeld in the pursuit of lap time. He has his West McLaren dancing frantically, like the pitter-patter of torrential rain on an uncooperative rooftop. He wrestles the car with a plum back away from the darker side of traction limits again and again. Oh, it's a weapons grade drive this. Some would say that it would be fitting that this is the last time that we'd see an F1 car being driven at 10 tenths on the Goodwood Hill run. Because soon thereafter, Goodwood would clamp down massively on safety. You'd be forgiven for thinking that Heidfeld's hill run very much pleased the racing gods. Heidfeld crossed the line that day in an unfathomable 41.6 seconds. That's a time that would go down in Goodwood Festival of Speed history. Nobody would break that ever. Or so you'd think. But in 2022, up stepped a new previously unheralded entrance into the Goodwood Hill Run Arena. And it goes by the name of the McMurtry Spearling or McFlurry if you're on first name terms. There's one catch though, it's electric. I mean, could you even imagine trying to get a Dale Earnhardt behind the wheel of and car of the electric variety? You're having a laugh? Absolutely impossible seat. He'd slap you for wasting his time with such and serious things and command that you returned with something proper that had a clutch and a stick. I mean, come on. And to boot, the McFlurry hasn't been built by one of the usual Bavarian suspects. No Audi, no BMW, nor no Mercedes badges in sight. Oh no, it's built by a company called McMurtry. McMurtry? Who are they? So what you're telling me, Cam, is that a kit car built in someone's garage is going to see to the 99 McLaren that had Adrian Newey as its designer and that Mika Hakkinen used to put pay to the great one, Michael Schumacher. Come on, Cam. Be serious, mate. But hold on. Just, just hear me out. Look, the McFlurry weighs in at just under a tonne and that's nothing. I mean, that's only a couple hundred kilos heavier than your ultra tricked out lightweight RB19 and that's your race leading F123. 
The McFlurry will pump out a mean 1,000 brake horsepower, and that's as near as makes no difference, the same as what F1 cars are pumping out in 2023. And if you're swayed by sound, when this thing's being driven in anger, it sounds like winter is coming. I'm not even joking. It just sounds like a harbinger of the apocalypse, this thing. I mean, just listen to it. Now I know it's not what we're used to. It can never beat a petrol engine on sound, never. But if the future is electric, and this is what it sounds like, then I'm in in. To boot, it's a tiny little thing, this. It's the same size as a 60s F1 car. Very little drag then. They designed this thing with the DNA of F1 cars front and center. Like the Brabham fan car, which was so genius that the instant it won a race, they banned it immediately. But some would say that the Brabham fan car walked so that this McFlurry could run. Because the fan technology is the McFlurry's party trick. It's its gift. I mean, they're all run off electrics and this means that the fans, well, they adjust instantly. And so now is when you're gonna get your two tons worth of downforce, the very instant that you need it. And remember that's without any clumsy bolt on bodywork. There's gonna be super draggy down the straights. And a tech behind ground effect and the skirts that seal the floor is so advanced it would leave ground effect goat Colin Chapman scratching his head. Unlike our mates at Braxton and Bricksworth, they worked hard on making sure that the skirts sealed the entirety of the floor. Which means to say that this smoke flurry, well, it's fast. And particularly so through the twisties. Because through turn four at Silverstone, BFFs for Stappen and Hamilton will hit up to 60 miles an hour. The McFlurry, however, well, that'll cruise through an extra six miles an hour, 66 miles per hour. Calm. Now let me show you what that looks like. Now if you're anything like me, your eyes could barely keep up with that thing. Even the cameraman, can barely keep up, bless him. And you think for all of its downforce gains in the turns, it's got to sacrifice something on the straights because there are no free dinners in aero. But in terms of aero efficiency, this is the beauty of the fan system. You get something for nothing. And for those of you out there racing for slips, the McFlurry does 0 to 16 1.4 and the quarter in eight seconds. Simply put, this is the quickest production car that's ever been made. And so equipped with all the facts and stats on this McMurtry Spearling, you'll understand now that this car is nothing to be played with. And it will make sense when I tell you that it made absolute mincemeat out of Nick Heidfeld's time on the Goodwood Hill Run. Because we're not talking about equal machinery, are we? One's an F1 car from 1999. One's a hypercar from the future. This is not a fair fight. And that's why in the hands of former F1 Donny Max Chilton, the McFlurry destroyed Nick Heidfeld's time by a whole two seconds. Oof. Because let's be honest, with all this regulatory red tape, New and Co are playing this speed game with two hands tied behind their back. But not McMurtry though. No, sir. And word on the F1 curb is that McMurtry will be bringing a more powerful, updated version of this car to the Goodwood Hill Run this year. Sunday, the 16th of July. Oh, the speed revolution, it seems, will be televised.